Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to get your DSLR taking some awesome pictures of the fish in your tank. All right, so thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs. And this is one I've had a few questions about after I've released a few pictures of um, my fish and my corals and I guess my full tank shots where um, I've been using my DSLR for the last few years to, um, I guess, hone my skill on taking the best possible pictures of the fish in my tank. And um, whilst I've seen a few guides out there, including one that I did a few years ago, I haven't really seen one that just cuts to the chase and just gives you some baseline settings and tells you how to adjust it from there to get your pictures at least 95% of the way there. So I plan on addressing that in this video. If you do want to see a more in-depth, super technical video on how to tweak the settings perfectly to get exactly the results you're after, I'm more than happy to make it. But I'm taking a bit of a gamble here that uh, the majority of people that have a DSLR at home just want to know the basics to get them most of the way there and getting some good pictures. So I figured let's jump into it. All right, step one is picking the equipment. Now, hopefully you've got a DSLR handy. If not, this is probably not the video for you, although the pictures that we're gonna share at the end may inspire you to pick up a cheap DSLR and lens from here because um, once you move away from taking pictures on your phone with a filter and you move to a DSLR, regardless of how new, how expensive it is, you're gonna absolutely blow your mind in the quality of the results and that I can promise you. So I'm not gonna jump into which DSLR body you should use. The body you should use is the one you can afford or the one you already have. My only requirement is that it can shoot in a manual mode and that it can shoot raw images. The raw images is important because all of that stuff that we normally rely on a filter to do on our phone, we're gonna get our computer to tweak of the raw image data rather than on a JPEG, which is what a lot of images are normally taken as. When we do it as a raw, we then process all of that extra information into a JPEG after the fact on our computer and it allows us to get what is somewhat usually an average picture turning into an incredible picture. So um, we need a raw a camera that can shoot raw images and ideally one that has a manual mode. All right, the next bit of equipment you're gonna need is obviously a lens. Now, lenses, let me forewarn you, can get incredibly expensive. If you thought you were over the hurdle with the uh, DSLR body, the lens is something that can go crazy. I kind of almost liken it to the, um, the camera body being the glass box. It's something that you think is always gonna be the most expensive part and it ends up being almost the cheapest. The lens ends up being everything else, all your fish, coral, livestock equipment. That's where the money can really add up. Now, for that purpose, I don't really have a strong recommendation on the lens you should use. Now, I know I'm gonna get asked the question, so the lens I do use mostly is the Canon 100mm macro. It's a great lens, but it is not the lens you have to use. In fact, I've got a RF35 and RF16, both much more affordable lenses that take an incredible shot. If you're not really into camera bodies, and that's probably the audience of this video, and you're not sure what lens to get, you wanna have a look in your arsenal for a lens that's not too big of a zoom, that you have to stand on the other side of the room to take a picture of, and one that has the lowest F number. If you have a look at a lens, it will have an F number on it. That is what's known as the aperture. One that can go as low as possible, which actually means as wide open as possible. Super confusing, we won't go into all the details here. But a low F number normally means a fast lens, normally. It's a pretty safe rule of thumb. So this one here has an F 2.8. Whilst I do have some others that are F 1.8, this is the lens I'm gonna use because I know it's super fast and it is stuck at F 2.8. It doesn't zoom in and zoom out and change that aperture as I go. So I know I'm at 100 millimeter zoom and I know I'm at aperture F 2.8. That's the lens I'm gonna use. All right, that's our equipment out of the way. Easy as that. The next thing you wanna do is prepare the tank for the images. What I do here is I close off the curtains. I generally tend to wear a dark shirt so I minimize reflections. I've turned a couple of lights off in the kitchen because I get reflections on the glass. And last but not least, I've cleaned the glass for the tank. Now, if you wanna do some additional steps that will save you some time later, you can turn the flow off if you want to. It's just gonna stop some of these floaties appearing in your image which can sort of, I wouldn't say they ruin your image, but they take a little bit more time to process out later. I'm lazy, so I have not even cleaned my glass and I'm definitely not gonna turn my flow off because I want my fish to act as they normally do. So I'm gonna leave everything on as it normally is. You may also note I have not adjusted my lighting in any way, unless your tank is just purely lit by blue lights. If you've got any sort of white spectrum in there at all, that'll be fine. Don't worry about the old days where we change the lighting to suit the camera. We're gonna change the camera to suit the lighting. 
All right, we've got the equipment ready, we've got the room ready, we've got the fish tank ready. It is now time to take pictures. Now, this is when we fire on our camera. Take the lens cap off is always a good idea. Switch it over to a manual mode, which depending on your camera, that will vary. Mine is indicated by an M on the switch dial. And then for fish, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set it a uh, speed of one 160th of a second for the shutter speed. You will need to vary that between one 100th and one 160th of a second, depending on how bright the conditions are in your tank. Probably 125th is a good safe starting place. I'm gonna go to aperture and I'm gonna set that to F4. As touched on before, that's how big of an opening there is in the lens. The bigger that opening is, the more light that enters the camera, so you're gonna get a clearer picture. But what it does mean is your item that's in focus is gonna be razor sharp and everything else is gonna be blurry. The bigger we make that number, the smaller the hole in the camera gets and the more in focus things are. It doesn't make any sense, but it's just the way it is. F4 I find is to a very good setting to allow a lot of light into the camera, but still keep our entire fish in focus. So. That's really the only takeaway you need to know there. And then the next step is ISO. I like to set that to auto, even though I'm on a manual mode, ISO is basically the amount of digital enhancement you need to get your image bright. I like to set that to auto because it does a pretty good job in the camera of picking what ISO it should use. So um, I'm gonna set that to auto and let things be. Now, the next question I get asked a lot is what white balance or what filter do you put on the camera? To be honest, if you're shooting in RAW, it does not matter. That is a setting that gets baked into the image when we convert it to a JPEG. We're gonna do that on the, on the computer later. So I guess technically you could set it to an auto white balance or you could set your white balance up as warm as it goes. It really doesn't matter. We're shooting in RAW and that is the final setting we need to be mindful of. On my camera, I need to jump into the menu and ensure that the shooting options are set to either JPEG and RAW or just RAW raw, which is what I use in my case. All right, next step is to stand in front of our tank and try to be as square as you can with a glass. As soon as you're on a bit of an angle like that, you're gonna get some weird reflections and the fish is gonna be all distorted. It's gonna be super hard to focus on things. Try to remain square with the topic that you're taking a picture of. From there, I'm gonna find something and I'm gonna follow him and press the button in to take the picture. Now, <laughs> one more tip for you guys playing at home. If you're new to DSLR cameras, they are digital. You don't pay per photo, take lots of photos. I'd honestly rather take 100 photos and get one or two that are good than to take 30 photos, realize when I get to the computer that they're all rubbish and come back out and start again. Snap away, that does not cost you anything, fire away. Now, while snapping away, what I do tend to have a look at is even though I've got the ISO set to auto, when I'm focusing in on an image, it'll actually show me on screen what that ISO is going to be. If I see that going far over 1000, I know I need to slow the shutter speed down. If it's a long way under 1000, I know I can speed the shutter up a little bit and that's gonna get a crisper picture of the fish if it's swimming along. You're not gonna get that sort of motion blur shot. In this instance, when I'm aiming on something, my ISO is coming in at around about 1,000, around about 800 to 1,000, and that's totally fine. So that is why on my tank, at least, I shoot at 160th of a second with this body and this lens. Bear in mind when you change the lens, the settings may not translate, so you may need to change that shutter speed from there. But again, just have a look at your ISO. Personally, I find if it's going over 1,000, you're starting to get some average looking photos, and if it's under 1,000, you're totally fine. All right, I think I've got plenty of pictures on here that we can use as an example. What I'm gonna do now is take you into my study. We're gonna jump on my computer and I'll take you through the most important part as to getting some cracking pictures of your fish and that is post-processing. Let's go do it. All right, now that we're at the computer, I'm gonna jump on the Mac side of my computer. I'm gonna rip out the memory card and I'm gonna import the photos we've just taken onto that computer. Open up Lightroom Classic, which is the software I use and I'll show you why because it's super, super quick to get some really nice images. There are alternatives out there, but to be honest, I only know Lightroom Classic, so that's the only program I'm gonna talk you through. Have a look around to see if there's something out there that will suit you, but essentially, we need something to process these raw images and convert them into JPEGs and put all the settings we want into those images as we go. So I'm gonna bring the camera in a bit closer, do a screen recording here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. We'll go through each picture step by step. All right, so here we are on my Mac and I've navigated down to where I've stored these pictures from my uh, digital camera. I've saved them onto the desktop, put them in this Taking Fish DSLR pictures. I've selected them all. Now we're gonna import those into uh, straight into Lightroom Classic. Now, 
We're faced with these images here. Some of these are going to be absolutely rubbish. Some of them are going to have potential and some of them are going to be the next, uh, I don't know, the next product picture for uh, something from Aquaforest or meet their, uh, their calendar. But uh, first thing we're going to do is go to develop and we'll just do a quick pass of these pictures. The only thing I'm really looking for here is to see if the fish picture is remotely possibly has any sort of potential. And the best thing to look for here is to have a look at the eye to see if it's in focus. That one's not too bad, so we'll keep it. This one here again, eyes mostly in focus, we'll keep it. This one, yeah, the eyes in focus. I'm not sure if I like the angle, but we'll keep it for now. This one is out of focus. So uh, sorry, Mr. Clownfish, you're gonna get deleted. I don't wanna deal with you. All right, the next one, eyes in focus, happy days, eyes in focus. Eyes not really in focus, plus I don't like the way the image is too close. Gonna get rid of that one. He's a big fish, so the 100 millimeter macro is probably not gonna work for him. Looks like that's mostly in focus. We'll work with that. Uh, I don't like that image. Eyes a bit blurry and I just don't like it. So I'll get rid of it. Ooh, that's a cracker. That'll come up real nice. We'll keep that. That one, maybe not as much, but we'll keep it. The eye is in focus, sort of. We'll keep it. Uh, yep, keep it, keep it, mm, yep, keep it, nope, get rid of that, nope, get rid of that, definitely get rid of that, that has potential but it is, eye is out of focus, sorry Mr. Hogfish, don't make the cut today, that's looking better. He is mostly in focus there. Unfortunately, my fox face has kind of ruined the picture, but let's work with it. We'll see how we go with that one. His eye is in focus. His eye is not in focus. His eye is. His eye is. That's a cracking looking shot. We'll get rid of these. Uh, these are the sort of marks I mentioned that if you turn your flow off, you can get rid of, or uh, if you clean your glass properly, but uh, I'll show you how we get around that. That's gonna be a beautiful picture. That might be one we use as a, uh, as an example, but uh, that's a great looking shot. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. That's good. Don't like that one as much. This just comes down to personal preference, mind you. This shot's no good to me because I can't envision a way I'm gonna be able to crop that down to get rid of these uh, smears on the glass here and also to get rid of this huge distracting uh, yellow body from the fox face. So, um, plus the fish looks like he's got a little mark on top there. It's just not a pleasing picture to me. So, um, you know, because there's pictures in my tank, I can afford to be pretty uh, cutthroat and delete the pictures I don't like because I can always go out and take more. If I'm taking pictures of someone else's tank, I might put a bit more effort into trying to resurrect that photo, but uh, this one's looking awesome. That eye is perfectly in focus. We've got a couple of marks to clean up there, but that's gonna come up a treat. That one, for my liking, is a little bit too close. I do like the way the cleaner ass is there, just on his back, um, picking away at him. Maybe we'll keep it for that point alone. And that one's good, cool. So we are down to 26 photos to work with here and um, I'm gonna run you through my super quick processing method to get these all down into the uh, quality of images that I'd be happy to share. So we're gonna start off here with our uh, mustard tank. First things first, I don't like the way he's framed in this picture. He obviously was trying to back out of the shot. So I'm just gonna crop that down. I click on the crop, bring him up so he's remotely sort of centered somewhere in, uh, yeah, that sort of range is fine. And he's now cropped, happy days. Next step, there's a couple of little marks here. In fact, one there, one up here. I'm gonna to go to the heel button. I'm gonna heel over the top of that. And I'm gonna heel over the top of that. I think that's all the marks I'm worried about. So I can close the heel button. Next thing, I'm gonna to need to add a bit of warmth to this image because uh, the tank was fairly blue when it was taken. I'm gonna to go to about 20,000 Kelvin. That looks pretty good to me. I just wanna actually crop him down a little bit further because I don't quite think he's centered enough. I'm worried that he's getting a little bit small or a little bit large in the image, but um, we'll work with that. I might even rotate him a little bit there just because I feel like he should be tipped up a bit more. All right, that's better. Next thing, we've got this detail here. I can see the image is a little grainy, which basically comes down to our ISO. Just gonna put a little bit of noise reduction in there until that smooths up a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. I might pop back up to dehaze. This is one of my favorite settings. Take a little bit of dehaze out. You'll see it just kind of gives maybe a little bit more contrast. It's not a bad looking image. And then realistically from there, we're pretty well done. If I really wanted to make the fish pop in this picture, I could go to the mask button here, which is something fairly new. Click on select subject. 
The computer is going to use artificial intelligence to detect that this is the focus of the uh, image. It has unfortunately left his tail out of that, which is annoying, but we'll work with it anyway as an example. I'm going to click invert, which is going to make everything else what I'm adjusting now. I'm going to take a little bit of exposure out of everything else, just so the fish pops a bit more. And I might take a little bit of, uh, let's see, we'll take a little bit of sharpness out of the rest of the image and uh, maybe a little bit of clarity out just so that the fish pops a bit more. From there, I think that pitch is pretty well done. We can move on to the next. All right, next up, we've got my golden blenny here. Same sort of deal. I'm just gonna frame him in this picture a little bit better. Um, I like him to sort of sit mostly across this middle third here. I mean, depending on what you want him to do, corals, I tend to be a little bit more uh, less uh, central, but fish, I try to frame right in the middle of the picture. So he's framed roughly where I want him. I'm gonna bump that Kelvin up to somewhere where it suits, probably around the 20,000 Kelvin mark. We're gonna take a little bit of dehaze out. We might brighten this image up a little bit, a bit more exposure. We're going to put a little bit of noise reduction in just to smooth up some of that ISO. I'm going to heal this spot over here just because there's a little fleck there. Let's make that a bit smaller because it's changing the nose of the fish in the background. There's a spot there, it looks like a little spot there, a little spot there. And hey, presto, your water is now crystal clear without turning the flow off. Turn heal off. What I will do though is I will do the uh, select subject and then invert it because I just want to make everything else a little less bright. So you can see we've got exactly all of the fish this time. I'm going to select invert, turn the exposure down a little bit just so everything else sort of backs away from this fish and you can see the picture we've got up here now it's looking pretty cool um, I don't think we need to do much more I'll just turn the masking off dehaze is good saturation is good noise reduction is good I think that picture is absolutely awesome I could add a little bit of vignetting if I wanted to to further enhance him but um, I think with the uh, masking that picture is pretty good so we'll move on to the next one on second thoughts, looking at this picture of my uh, orange shoulder, I just don't like the angle it's on. I can tell that I've sort of shot on a, uh, not a 45 degree angle, but I'm not square onto the fish. So we're gonna drop that one. Easy as that, you've got to be cut through it sometimes. This clownfish picture, I'm not sure how well it's gonna come up, but hey, let's give it a try. We're gonna crop him down a fair way. Uh, not too much, cause he's a small fish. Pop him in there. Okay, we've got a little bit of healing to do here. Let's see spot there, spot there. Spot there, I do love the way that uh, he's so far from the background. So he's nicely in focus and everything else is really blurry, which just looks really cool. Really makes the fish pop in this picture, which gives it some potential. I think that's most of our little specks of uh, detritus floating in the water. I might just uh, rotate him a little bit. Can we center him up a bit more? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, let's get some uh, color into this. Get him up to about the 20,000 looks good. Take a little bit of dehaze out, which just removes a bit of the milkiness from the picture. Um, we can do our mask trick where we're gonna select the subject and then invert that, take a little bit of exposure out. Like I can go full black if you wanna have an image that just shows the clownfish, but I do actually like the background in this picture. Just don't want it to be quite as prominent. So something like that looks pretty cool in my eyes. And I think from there, it doesn't look too bad. I had a little bit of noise reduction. I think from there, that's a pretty cool looking picture. There is a tiny little speck here. I've just noticed I can uh, heal that one. I'm just gonna make that a lot smaller because I don't want it to affect the uh, the fin of the clownfish. But um, all in all, that's a uh, poster quality picture. All right, onto my Atlantic blue. Let's get some color in there because he's all sorts of weird there. The blue just overpowered in this uh, picture. so. Um, just gonna fix that up. There's a couple of spots to heal up here. You see how quickly the healing is. This is why I don't bother turning the flow off because it just makes the fish act weird. And um, if your water's not that filthy, it kind of comes up pretty fine. There's one more spot I just noticed there though. This picture here, I might rotate a little just to sort of square him up a little bit more. I think that's gonna look a bit better, let's see. Yeah, it's probably still not the greatest, but it'll do. A little bit of dehaze out, it just makes the colors a bit richer. That's probably all I do. Maybe a little bit of exposure, maybe a little bit of saturation. I'm not gonna change anything in the background. I like that picture the way it is. We'll move on to the next. This one is one that I think's got real potential. I love the mustache on the um, Ballas Angel here. I don't know if I would frame this one up too much. I actually quite like him being a bit off center, but uh, maybe something like that. Maybe just straighten him a touch. I think that looks pretty cool. By the time we add some uh, color in here, 
I'm gonna go a little bit further than I normally do, a little bit more exposure. I notice some of the highlights and the whites are a bit blown out here, but um, I used to address that with these here, but I do find that will affect, doesn't affect the fish too much there, so I might give it a little go. The whites is gonna affect everything a bit too much though, but we'll go there, give it a bit more exposure. I wanna rotate him just a little bit more, just so his mustache is straight up and down. That looks good. I uh, need a little bit of noise reduction. Now let's uh, select the subject. Thinking, 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 we got him, cool. Let's invert that for the background. Take a bit of exposure out of the background there, not too much. We might actually do that for the background and then put more exposure in the entire image. That looks pretty cool. Add a little bit of dehaze. That's such a cool picture, I really like that. Um, maybe a little more exposure just to brighten him up a bit more. That's cool, I like that, that's a cool picture. I think we will leave that one alone now before I start uh, ruining it. If I wanted to add some uh, vignetting or something, I could. That's enough. All right, <laughs> let's leave that one as is. Moving on to the next picture. I don't like that one as much, so I'm going to delete it. It's just going to make me feel like the other picture was better, so it's gone. This one of the clownfish. Now, this is interesting. He's got a lot of uh, focus right here, and particularly on these gills, but I don't want to frame it too tightly because these clownfish are so small. I actually like them to remain small in the image. I might uh, just straighten him up a little bit, something like that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Sweet, let's uh, heal these big spots here because I don't like floaties in the water and the picture. It just makes everything look dirty and not nice. That's pretty cool. Let's get some color in there. Around 20,000 looks good. I've just noticed another spot I need to heal. That should do that. Okay, good. We will get a bit of this brightness of the background out of it just because um, it's taking away a little bit from the fish. Not too bad, but uh, we'll select the inverse of that, take a bit of exposure out of the background just so that uh, the clownfish is the real star of that image. And um, I think we look pretty good there. Let's export these three here as good examples. So I'm just selecting those. I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna to go to export. I'm gonna pick where I want them to go, which is gonna be into the same folder that uh, I took the pictures from. I'll put them into a uh, subfolder called JPEG. I'm gonna give them a uh, uh, video on fish pictures. Awesome. I'm going to leave the image quality to 70. I find that gives me a totally fine quality image. Uh, my watermark is selected. So we're going to export those three pictures and then uh, check them out. So just up here, it's exporting. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. We can go to our folder now. Have a look in the JPEGs. And uh, here's our pictures. That one looks awesome. That one looks pretty cool. It's a shame, just a little bit more of his eye wasn't in focus there, but I love the way you can see the frills around his uh, gills there, it looks really cool. And just the background's just perfectly blurred, just really gives a good sense of depth to that picture. And then uh, the next one is another one of our clownfish. We've got the real side profile. You can see the uh, markings of him all the way through. Same sort of deal with a small fish a long way from the background. We've got that really nice blurring. Got my watermark on there, just so hopefully no one steals my image, or if they do, at least I get a bit of credit for it. But um, all in all, I think that's a pretty good overview of how to get some great pictures of your fish. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my bare bones guide to how to use your DSLR camera to get some absolutely beautiful pictures of fish in your aquarium. If you've got a camera sitting in the cupboard collecting dust, hopefully it's inspired you to get it out and snap away. Alternatively, if you're yet to make the jump from your smartphone to a DSLR, hopefully this has inspired you to take that leap. If the cost of a DSLR camera is what's been holding you back up to this point, please don't let that be the case. A secondhand lower spec setup is gonna get you pictures 95 if not 98% as good as what you saw on screen today. The higher end cameras just have a few features that will help you get more good quality shots out of your 100 photos that you take, as opposed to some of the cheaper ones with some of their fancy autofocus and extra megapixels. But realistically, a low end camera is still gonna be a hundred times better than the images you can take on your smartphone. So some of the, I know personally some of the best pictures I've taken of my aquarium were with a $300 secondhand Canon 7D setup. So please don't let the cost of a DSLR camera be what holds you back.
Now lastly, once you have got your camera or you've picked up a new camera and you've taken a few photos, if you still have any questions or comments or you need some help getting the best out of your pictures, don't be afraid to ask for help down in the comment section below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there and I will endeavor to do everything I can to ensure you're getting the absolute most out of every picture you're taking. So feel free to hit me up in the comments down below, more than happy to help where I can. But other than that, guys, I will wrap the video up there. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any further questions, comments, feedback, if you'd like to see any other videos like this in the series, be it on the full tank shots or top-down coral shots, anything like that in the photography world, I'm more than happy to address it. Just let me know in the comments below. If you want to see a video made, I'll be more than happy to make it. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe, keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.